everybody. Josh, the RV nerd of Bishop's RV, doing things a little bit differently today. Actually, kicking off our video here inside of this Alpha Wolf 26 RL because it is raining. Out. It's a good day for a duck. It's raining outside. Hopefully, the weather breaks before I have to go outdoors. If not, I brought the umbrella. But I, I, I specifically picked this camper to record on this rainy day. Uh, because if you're going to be stuck inside on a rainy day, you are going to appreciate all the big living space that this RV has. So you don't feel like you're all packed into a, you know, one little space and going stir crazy next to one another. So the idea behind this RV is it gives us opposing living room super slides. Uh, on one side, you've got your living room slide with all your seating, um, and, uh, all the windows you could ever want on your RV on what I think the side of the RV that people would want their windows, the camp side of the RV. Um, additionally, straight across from that, you've got a direct facing entertainment center. Now they do let you pick your own TV in one of these by default. These don't come with a factory TV, but frankly, most factory TVs, I feel like for the same or less money, I could go to the big box store of my choice or Amazon and get a better smart TV anyway. And some people don't care to camp with the TV. So this might be one of those that works for you, but you've got that, uh, opposing kitchen slide as well with an Island. So you've got good prep space, great, like coffee and bar or like griddle top counter space or anything like that. But the idea behind this floor plan is to give you the biggest living space possible while still being uh, towable, basically, where it's not like this 40-foot monster rig. Uh, instead, you've got a compact bedroom-bathroom design, completely designed to keep the RV lighter, shorter, less cost. But along the way for the 24 updates on these, we've got things like that oxygenic shower head. The, it's the number one aftermarket replacement shower head out there. You got the bigger vent fan in the bathroom that everybody would rather have anyway. They also have a vastly larger uh, freshwater holding tank this year and a bunch of other good little updates as we go. This RV has some good points and it has some things that I think some folks are going to be like, nope, that's an instant deal breaker. And I'm going to do my best to cover both of those. And if you appreciate how even on a rainy day, we get out here to give you the good, bad, ugly, and in between, hit that subscribe button. Let's get started. So starting back here in the uh, big opposing slide living room and kitchen, um, the RV maintains a nice big feel, uh, kind of despite in a way uh, having a more traditional six and a half foot interior height. That's also one of the things that does help this uh, maintain a little bit of a reduced weight. It's not extra super duper tall inside. And if you do want extra super duper tall inside, we certainly have that. Brands like Eagle, Reflection, Ember, Touring uh, are going to have those, you know, bigger, more spacious features. And I've also done a thing here where this comes with um, what I call the Judy Dench Benchy Bench. It's the, uh, the Franken table, where it's a table and two chairs with one floating bench, basically an ottoman on steroids that has storage in it. And I've uh, placed that in front of the uh, hide-to-bed sleeper sofa that's kind of coming into frame right now in the back of the RV. Because it, it helps, I think, kind of drive home the fact, for the most part, this is a couple's model. But, like, if somebody wants to chill on the theater seat, or if you have some guests, or somebody else wants to stretch out over here, multiple people can be here and kick their feet up all at the same time. And with that being a sleeper sofa, you know, you can maintain some comfort doing it. I really appreciate, I mean, look how they're putting lights under the overhead cabinets and on the, uh, the, 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 the rear wall. I mean, they've, Actually, I think they've almost doubled the number of lights that they have in these compared to years past. And if you look at those nice side stands, that is a two-person kind of cedar sofa. But you've got household and USB outlets on both sides right near the tabletop where it makes the most sense. And again, speaking of lighting, I, I mean... You know, some manufacturers will put like one or two lights above the dining. Like they they did the decorative light and just the generic let's let's cast some light on the subject kind of uh, lighting on here. They've really brightened and lightened it up. Now you might notice how not every window opens for airflow. Uh, again, that's one of those things where Arctic. Er, pardon me. Well, Arctic Wolf is the fifth wheel version of the Alpha Wolf family. Uh, so kind of right, kind of not. But the uh, the Alpha Wolf series is not made to be the biggest, flashiest, fanciest thing. But this year, they're including some creature comfort features, like a little centralized vacuum on the left and the little, what I call, electric dustpan on the right. That black rectangle, it's got a little toe flick where you literally just flick it up and it goes and makes that kind of, you know, vacuum sound. And um, you just brush everything right into it, which is kind of nice. You don't necessarily need a dustpan. I found out when I was in science class when I was younger that science doesn't suck, ladies and gentlemen. Because technically suction does not exist. Vacuums exist. 
suction is not a real thing, scientifically speaking. Isn't that a weird little mind bender? Uh, anyway, now when you move the ottoman over here, the, the coloration is a little bit different because it is designed to ma match the, uh, the color of the, uh, the, the chairs over in the dining area. So it might, I don't know, it might look a little like not ideal to you, but that's, that's the case. Now, there is a factory option for a TV. Right now I'm laughing because my wet shoe squeaked against the, uh, the, the pleather of the sofa and it sounded like I was cracking rats in here. And I can't wait for the comments to be like, yeah, sure, it was your shoe, Josh. And I'm not going to sit here trying to replicate it because it's just going to go badly, I feel. Anyway, but what I'm getting at is the TV is at a good viewing position. Well, the entertainment center is at a good viewing position should you choose to mount a TV. So kind of keep that in mind. And I do like how they, they cleaned up and trimmed up their slide fascia this year. And if I'm going to get, like, it's it's neat that they, they added the central vacuum, that they improved their solar package, that, you know, the, the shower head is better, the fresh water tank is bigger this year. Those are all cool features, no question. But I think the best thing I can say about Alpha and Arctic Wolf this year is for really, I think, one of the, the first times uh, largely in the history of this uh, brand, they have put a focus on delivering a clean product where it you don't have to come through and uh, with a staple gun and rehang tons of trim. You don't have to grab a dustpan and sweep up 10 pounds of sawdust off the floor off a brand new RV. Don't get me wrong. They're not perfect. They're not flawless. And I hope they continue their trend. But I respect what they're doing and what they've done. And uh, I, I think they're doing a decent job of it. Now, you might have noticed... There's no heat vents in the floor. Uh, they have maintained some carpet over here in the slide, I suspect for cost vectors, but there are some people that like a little bit of warm carpet on their feet. There's a regular viewer, Mr. Nick B, um, who uh, constantly says, I like carpet on my old feet. You know, it just feels better to me. And uh, where do we want to begin? Let's actually start cracking open all the storage, but I want to begin down here under the sink because it looks like a big cabinet but it's actually not pardon my umbrella by the way it's raining outside so i put my umbrella in the kitchen sink so that it's not dripping water all over the place i figured if water goes down the kitchen drain that's like the best place it could possibly go anyway just trying to respect the fact that this might be someone else's property one day that's why i don't wear my shoes on someone else's furniture apparently my wet shoes just make squeaky fart sounds against the furniture but never mind that the stovetop is obviously smashed right up against the refrigerator wall and it is not as friendly to right-handed folks as it otherwise could have been. And it's always tricky. I never know which way a manufacturer should necessarily go. Should they, uh, you know, be right-hand, left-hand bias? But it does feel like the majority of people are right-handed. And it, it does kind of feel like that's the way it should go. And apologies, lefties. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't choose this uh, for you in the world. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> hide a bed sleeper sofa on the back wall. Obviously, you got that 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 uh, theater recliner over there, and it is it has a big old population controlling hard fixed armrest in the middle. Those are sectional sofas, though, so keep in mind if you want to remove the middle armrest and smash it together like a love seat, you actually could do that. And it's not gonna like screw up your factory warranty or anything. It's just you're just taking out a piece of the sofa, no big deal. Um, and again, you can move that floating bench around to a bunch of different areas, and they have maintained their use of the zebra shades. I will tell you. Um, I've seen some feedback from some people saying, man, I love those things. And I've also seen some feedback from some people saying, uh, if I'm looking at those, when I roll them up or down, they absolutely give me a splitting migraine immediately. So um, it might be something, if you're not sure if you're photosensitive like that, you might want to come try one of these out, check them out in person. I do like that black stainless skirted sink there. And you saw that that uh, faucet head kind of can, you know, bop around if you need to do a high pressure sprayer on one area or another that is also a 12 volt dc compressor fridge that's one of the bigger like almost 11 cubic foot ones and um the uh the thing there is last year this had a by default at the beginning of the year it had a 50 watt solar package on the roof with a minimal charge controller that was not capable of seeing any sort of expansion well, this year they're doing a 100 watt solar panel on the roof, which isn't major, I get it, but they're doing a charge controller that could uh, accept easily up to 400 watts of solar. So if you wanted to, uh, what you could do with it is you could easily just plug and play daisy chain um, extra solar panels up on the roof if you wanted to expand your solar package. That is obviously totally up to you. And by the way, what do you think of the microwave up here? I 
kind of like this arrangement. I love that big chunk of counter space over there and those easy reach outlets. I think that's really good, smart content. Um, you might notice how the middle door here, or the left door, because there's not three, um, doesn't open. That is an access panel of things like a furnace. I'm not sure what else might be back there, but that is an access panel to certain things. So kind of keep that in mind. You also saw how you've got the Obi-Wan Kenobi lightsaber lighting going on through this thing off that touchpad. Um, as we move our way into the bathroom, I want to mention this does have a tankless on-demand water heater. So if you're going to take a couple back-to-back -back hot showers... Uh, you can do that. Nobody has to worry about, you know, dealing with the uh, the chilly shower. Now, the toilet kind of looks a little bit tight here, but because your elbows are going to kind of fall over here into the door jam area, I found it pretty good. <laughs> Although, you saw how my thumb got hooked on the, uh, the, the framework of the door there. I guess just watch your thumbs when you're wiping your backside. I don't know what else to tell you there. And matching the slide fascia, they've got a, a double octopus fight club over here. Just giving you a place to hang some towels to dry off, which I think is nice. And speaking of drying off, you're not going to have to, uh, you know wait 10 hours for the little four inch fart fan to breathe all the steam from a long shower out of this thing you got the big fan in here now with the rv being six and a half foot tall my head uh, i'm a little over six foot myself is all the way up in the skylight but you might have noticed that crazy silver shower head that you have going on over there this has uh an oxygenics shower head which is the number one aftermarket replacement shower head that RVers look to from Amazon. They're doing it right from the factory level, and I hope we see more of that. There are so many things that are like super, super common aftermarket upgrades that owners often like to put in. I really like it when manufacturers just do those things right from the factory, because it might cost a couple bucks more up front, but in the actual aggregate long-term washout, it costs you less money because now you're not paying for something and then replacing it and, and buying a new thing after that. Now, they've changed their underbed storage here. Um, they made it a little bit more open face, which I, I don't necessarily dislike. And I think for folks who are looking for uh, maybe a cat litter box or a small dog bed thing, although I think a lot of us with dogs know that the dogs end up crawling all over us in bed. Uh, speaking of which, this is a short queen. That might be a problem for some folks, and again, I hope you appreciate that I go out of my way to, to mention facts like that, even though they might be negative deal-breaker factors for you. I still want you to know what you're getting in one of these RVs. Now, you do have household and USB outlets on both sides of the bed. You could easily see some right there. Since you have a sliding privacy door over here across from the bed, you've got TV hookups over there on the right-hand wall. If you plan on using them, you better get a swing arm mount because it's going to be a funky viewing angle. The only people that are going to see it are the folks camping next to you. Um, if you would prefer to not have a dual entry bathroom, there are certainly plenty of other builders with similar layouts to this that do not have a dual entry. Uh, but some folks kind of like it. If you get up and down at night and use the bathroom, some folks like it, some folks don't. That's why manufacturers all make their own individual little versions of all these crazy models, you know. Now, this right here is a household outlet with a USB type A and type C plug but it's also a single point inverter. So uh, if you are going to be camping uh, away from hookups, you do have at least one outlet in the RV that could be powered up when you need it. And if you notice here, they've redesigned their bedroom storage and now have a, uh, a, a like a, a drawer on each side of the bed, which I think is really cool. One thing I would like to see them do is uh, what I call the headboard power pockets, where instead of making that closet so deep into the nose, they kind of just flatten it out on the back and create a pocket right by your face where you could like keep your phone and stuff. That is, that's something I would like to see in the bedroom. I would obviously like to see a true queen bed as somebody of my height. If my life depended on it, I could put a true queen bed into this RV, but then you're going to be doing the butt scoot boogie and crawling over the bed to get in and out of it. And as I'm sure you've discerned, road mode is where this one becomes uh, a little bit problematic because again, the goal on this RV was to give you the biggest living room possible while providing you the shortest overall towing length possible. Uh, unless you're going to yeet your wife over that countertop, fellas, to get over there to the refrigerator, you're not going to be able to get to anything. However, keep this in mind. If you are at a travel stop, if you are at a position where you can fold down those stable steps on the outside of the RV, they stick out further than this slide out. And normally I would say that would allow you to get to the refrigerator, but... By default, for destination use, it makes sense that the refrigerator door opens from the left and swings to the right. 
it unfortunately also just, and I mean just barely touches that island. However, these refrigerators are designed by the uh, suppliers of the refrigerators to have the doors mounted on either side so they can be used in different floor plans and only have to sell or stock one refrigerator. So, at your discretion, if you are okay with opening the slide and flipping the refrigerator door, this could have some enhanced travel function beyond just bedroom and bathroom. It really depends up to you. I'm not going to give it a great road mode score. I think at best I give it about a 5 out of 10 myself. And thankfully the rain's let up a little bit. It's still not fun out here, but I don't let the weather stop me, kind of like the Postal Service. I still got a job to do here. Taking a look at the weights and the measures, um, you will see some people will report successfully and they feel comfortably towing this with a half ton pickup. You will also see a bunch of people who tried it and went, nope, got to get a new truck. Uh, and it really depends on the specific capacities of the truck in question, as well as maybe kind of where you're taking it. You know, up and down elevation changes through windy zones, it's going to push a half ton around more than likely. Flat land, comfortable towing, probably going to be okay. I do like the double power awning, though. That is uh, something right there that really gives us uh, good patio space. The front awning's a little short, but that's because, you know, they tried to keep the RV as short as possible. Now, that being said... This RV is still over 34 foot long from tongue to uh, bump, tip to tail. It's over 34 feet long. I think it's about close to 34 and a half if memory serves correctly. So you're gonna wanna kinda keep little stuff like that in mind. Now with it being kind of rainy today, what I don't wanna do is just leave a baggage door gaping wide open. Cause once again, somebody's going to buy this RV eventually and I want it to be in good shape for him. So doing some little movie magic cutaway kind of stuff right there. One of the things that you can see on this is that uh, it is a nicely finished big full pass through with a big baggage door on both sides. The battery disconnect is mounted up high enough that most of the time, I don't think shifting cargo is going to be something you're really going to have to be too awfully concerned about. And that big black box on the right side of the pass-through, that is your uh, charge controller, which is significantly enhanced compared to last year. <laughs> oh, God dang it. I just stepped in a puddle, and I'm wearing breathing running shoes for good foot support because I spend so much time walking around every day, which means... My feet are now a swamp, which is lovely. Oh, I forgot about this. Um, you see that little marker light, uh, that orange light at the, the black skirt down there? They, um, they are now prepped and ready for a uh, full observation camera system. So if uh, you want to put a camera on the back, you want to put a camera on the sides for like changing lanes, you can. But notice there's also a camera mount above the door. If you want to um, kind of double dip the purpose of those cameras, you can use it basically in a sense kind of like a security suite now it's not going to be the kind of thing that's going to send your foot you're not going to get a text message that says like alert alert gas station murder hobo coming to get you uh but you know if you hear a funny noise outside you can discern whether it's a raccoon or uh uncle gary who uh happened to tie one on and he's stumbling drunkenly through your uh campsite you know and it's interesting what they did with the outside speakers i like how they put them down low if you notice what they actually did is they just hid them behind the theater seat. Technically what that means is there's like a uh, little boxing to kind of enclose those inside the RV, but they put them in a, in a place that no one's really ever gonna see them. I think it's really smart personally. Now they've uh, stuck with their thermal window tint right here. Uh, these didn't used to have any variety of window tint whatsoever. They also used to have a darker gray skin. So between the window tint, the PVC sun reflecting roof membrane, the white AC shroud, the 15,000 standard BTU air conditioner, um, the uh, thermal tint windows, and the fact that you can option this uh, with a second air. This is something that could potentially do reasonably well in hot climates, which is important because when you have tons of windows, every single window has basically almost next to nothing in terms of R value. It is very important that you have a way to keep the RV comfortable in those climates. Now, what I would welcome, because I'm just a simple Midwestern boy who's, uh, you know, it gets hot in Michigan, but it, it don't get like Texas, Florida, Arizona hot. What I would appreciate, is anyone who owns any arctic wolf who lives in a hot climate could you please leave everyone a comment and uh you know let us know how your arctic wolf has done in those hot climate areas i'd appreciate that 
Now remember up top, we've got that 100 watt solar package. Down below, we have an enclosed underbelly and it is also forced air heated. Uh, that would be uh, basically call that an extended season package. Now, kind of like we did before, incorporating a little extra movie magic behind the entertainment center, they didn't waste the space. And I respect whenever a manufacturer does something like that, they just put it to good use, you know. Working our way up front here, you do have a single sewer outlet on this RV. It is a, uh, you know, a single-headed sewer monster, as it were. And if you notice, again, helping with that extended season function, you don't see the gate pull valves for those black and grays. Now, you do have an extra little cutoff right there for your kitchen gray that is exposed. But once again, they're not trying to say that this is some kind of magic all-weather camper. And frankly, anytime you start hearing somebody use phrases like four seasons and all weather any weather get away from them are that's not what rvs are rvs are not truly those things it is just a, a recipe to get you to buy an rv and then you're going to be on the hook when things don't go right with expensive fixes because you listen to the person that's supposed to be shooting you straight so kind of keep that in mind now a couple extra little details you might have noticed how the stovetop does vent heat outside these are cable slides my feet are not getting any drier by the moment so i'm gonna wrap this up now that we've kind of completed our 360. leave me some comments if you have extra questions and i'll do my best to fill in any blanks so thanks again for tuning in. Once again, if what you're looking for is tons of windows and a lot of space, but you, you don't want to necessarily go into the retirement budget, you don't want to cash in your 401k quite yet, that's where this RV might uh, kind of come into play right here. And frankly, um, if, if you read through the comments on a lot of these Alpha Wolves that I've covered, the Alpha Wolf owners who have had models like this have generally speaking been pretty darn happy with it. So who knows? Maybe it, you're not intending it to be your last camper, but maybe it's going to get the job done for you. Now to help you with that, I'm going to leave you some links in the video description where you can check for pricing and availability. I will also leave you some links to other manufacturers who have done some similar floor plans to help you decide which one might work for you or not. You know, Now if you're like, oh, it's great, but I'd rather have a bed slide man there's plenty of those out there too let me know what you're looking for and chances are i've got a video of something that might work for you but until then take care stay safe have fun and happy camping everyone you know with this light right above my head it, it looks almost like the opposite of when you hold a flashlight like under your face but it still kind of looks like creepy mm -hmm.